everybody, welcome. This is No Bullshit Gaming Podcast, two and a half gamers, session 21. We are discussing the latest industry news, having fun as always, and dropping knowledge. But let's not forget, this is still a 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe. So we are not being so serious. So, you know, please stop being serious as well. So today we have Felix, ad monetization guru, Braberg again. We have uh, Jakub, Mr. Game Design, RMER, and myself, Mate, you a ninja, Lancharic. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll discuss um, Bunker Bobby, then um, some VR headset uh, prototypes. We are going to discuss TikTok's Biden's mobile games um, a year, and then go through TikTok's impressive numbers and share some best practices on the UA side. And if we have some time, then maybe we will share some best practices for other UA channels. So how was your week, bitches? <laughs> Pretty good, I would say. First of all, like I'm looking forward to sharing this. So I absolutely got shit poured on me this week in terms of explicit ads being displayed in my games. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because Mati thought it's the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> and I'm just getting completely <laughs> like buried in like bad reviews. And basically the perpetrators Brick Breaker one and two by Mo Game or Moo Game, Mo Game I guess, haven't been able to find much where these guys are based. I think New York. But basically what these what should I call them? I guess, Matthew, you call them innovators, and I would call them no, assholes. I wouldn't would say innovators. <laughs> what they were I would doing say it's really what fun. They, what they were doing on their UA creatives, <laughs> basically, like, usually, like, all these ad networks that you use to display ads, they're really good at getting, like, explicit content and catching it after, like, a couple of hundred impressions. They're good at catching that. So what these guys were doing, they were putting, like, an explicit, like, really, like, yeah, dirty start card that was like a dirty, like, yeah, kind of XXX type of thing for the first second, like only one second in the first second of the video creative. And then it wasn't getting spotted. So instead of like doing 300 or maybe 700 impressions, it was like 30,000 impression in like four or five hours. <laughs> oh, it's just like, I'll, I'll put the creatives in the show notes, but it yeah. was like, it was, it was bad. But yeah, please Martin, share. Like, you, you yeah, think please share like, what you think. Is this is this like okay in your <laughs> like view? You? It's uh, I mean, it's not okay, but it's really funny. <laughs> it's really funny. It's strip poker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's strip like, poker in one second. Yeah, it's like one second, and it's like, did I really see that? And then it goes into like breaking the bricks, and you're like, what just happened? Yeah, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> oh, but it's uh, I mean, look. So uh, a lot of companies are trying to find loopholes and uh, try to innovate. get uh, innovate. Maybe <laughs> yeah, you can call it whatever you want. I yeah, I wouldn't say this is an innovation, but well, whatever. Uh, they are trying to you know increase the IPMs uh, so much they are willing to use this type of content uh, just to catch an attention. What's at risk if you do this? Like, what can happen? Can you get banned, or can your like advertiser accounts get banned? Because you know I banned these guys. It took me maybe ten hours to get all the complaints, and then I banned them in mm -hmm. all the networks from all our games. But like, what happens next? The, it can, yeah, well, if this happens on Facebook, you can get a ban immediately. I'm not sure how ad networks are going to deal with, deal with this. Um, but perhaps they will get banned eventually, but, you know, you can create a new um, new account. You can even create a new company. <laughs> it's like <laughs> easy. Anyway, easy. Well, uh, we'll leave the, a link to some of the ads. And yeah, the please. Uh, and you guys yeah, please, guys. Exactly. Tell us what you think, uh, if this is okay uh, with you guys, or if you think this is just too much. <laughs> Definitely too much. Yeah, I know. One other thing I thought was really cool that I wanted to share as well before we dive into the news was Google actually brought out something good, useful, and interesting this week. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. It's the <laughs> Google Play SDK Index. So what it is exactly what you think it is it sounds it's an sdk index of like their preferred sdks that you work with along with like a lot of really cool data so you can go in there you can search for like a fiber sdk and what you can see is you can see the latest version 
you can see the SDK adoption by version. And what you can also see is the SDK retention by app. So you can see like how long it takes people to remove it on average if it's a bad SDK. Mm. I think this is really cool. This is more of an admin thing. This is going to help me out quite a lot. Nice. Will well, uh, Apple come up with something similar? Yeah, no. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Most probably no. Most probably no. And uh, again, I would like to thank you guys for sharing such a nice comments and feedback with us. We really appreciate it. So please uh, keep doing that. Um, it's yeah, just, we will uh, try to sit still. Like, yeah. that's one of the few things we can you move around too much, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a double-edged sword because now we need to keep raising the bar um, every time. So uh, we will try to do that. It's going to be challenging, but we love challenges. And if you love what we are talking about, hit the subscribe button <laughs> again. <laughs> well, no, well, well, why are you laughing? The, no, 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 all good, all good. The subscribers are increasing. So yeah, please uh, <laughs> do so. So let's, yeah, let's get into the news. Let's get into the news. Um, yeah, who's going to Bobby, do... Bobby got re-elected. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the news pretty much. Yeah. Bunker Bobby won a shareholder vote, which by like 96% or something like that, right? 90, 91. 91. Then 88% <laughs> voted uh, in favor of company's executive compensation package. And additionally, on top of that, 95% voted against appointing an employee representative, which was the <laughs> vocal <laughs> scream from the employees lately. <laughs> oh my God, this is so much. The internal investigation revealed no wrongdoing. Yeah, so, um... Act Activision like, acquitted themselves of any wrongdoing. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. Bunker Bobby, well done. You're in there. Yeah. You're dug in there like Alabama tick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not going anywhere. <laughs> We had this bet with Jakob, uh, I think it was about last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I, thought year. He, I thought he would get cancelled by this this time over <laughs> here, but yeah, He's it dug didn't in, happen. Man. Bunker Bobby. Mm. Yeah, it's very deep. <laughs> it's very deep in that. Uh, yeah, but, but at least the, the, going good, the good news in the story is that, that um, Activision. Is there good news? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, the first union that got created there from the okay. QA workers there that actually they let happen and they can acknowledge. So. Maybe All right, yeah. well, maybe when Microsoft took over this, this will be kind of sorted over. Mm. I'm not sure, man. Well, let's see. Let's <laughs> we'll see. see. Okay. Like, I, I can still see a few more photos of the orc on, on oh, my yeah. LinkedIn feed. Oh, yeah, feet. yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's happening. The, the famous orc uh, in front of the building. And people leaving. Yeah, the most uh, used photo in the last year, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on, we got some nice reveals from Mark uh, from the Meta company, or let's say Facebook, for better understanding. Uh, they showed their new VR prototypes uh, with this kind of a long video. Like you have the short one where he's just showing the four prototypes and then the bigger one where they're actually talking about all the technical mumbo jumbo behind it with Michael Abrash, which is like, I guess, the, the go-to person regarding VR science now. Um, what's pretty much done there from a high level is that they want to push really, really like far with their standard. They even talking about this kind of visual Turing test that they want to solve, which is like, you won't notice that you're in virtual world because it will be so real. Uh, what the message pretty much tells you is that uh, we have this really, really four big problems, such as very focal, the focusing of eyes and imitating that the distortion of lenses, the resolution of displays, like you need to have like so much more dense pixel, pixel per degree dense displays and high dynamic range, which is it needs to be 10 times brighter than the current best HDR TVs. <laughs> so they build a headset on like each of these problems pretty much and they are able to kind of move forward. But in the end, they need to kind of shrink all of these into one and they are already so big currently. So I guess this whole thing is just to try to give investors and everybody that's doubting their vision some kind of a milestone that they achieved and they're moving forward to that like 20, 30 uh, year metaverse that Mark is always talking about. But yeah, it, it's really interesting from technical point. I can definitely see some progress, but I am still kind of skeptical if the 2030 date will be even hit because there's so much more technical, literally miracles they need to solve in order to get there that yeah, 
I don't know if they can hit that. Like, it will be a miracle itself if they can hit it by 2030, because that's pretty much in eight years. Why are you so excited about this? Because I can see real progress with it. I, I, I'm, you can I mean, see with your glasses, of course you can see. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but like they actually making pretty good progress there. Like with the new Holocake lenses that they pretty much developed and like all the mm. other things that they have, that they have like, they have actually that 10 times brighter display, which is doing like 20,000 nits, which compared to current HDR TVs, those are mm. like 2,000. So they have that, but it's like, you know, it's big like a microwave. So. Uh, VR has been the next big thing, like every 10 years for the last 20 years. Let's yeah. hope that this next 10 years will actually be the big thing that everyone's talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but Nate, like progress is exponential. Sometimes, Ooh. you know, it takes, you know, a few years and, and you're there. Yeah. You know how, how, how like VR was there from 60s, like first headset is 1960 something and it weighed like, like a car. <laughs> Okay. So we're getting there. It's the, the yeah, progress yeah. is exponential, you know, keep that in mind. But yeah, let's see. Good progress here, but still I'm kind of skeptical to hitting the 2030 uh, mark. So let's okay. see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, <clears throat> well, and then we have uh, the TikTok's Bidens uh, generates 1 billion for mobile games in one year. So that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, the growing portfolio drives 139 million downloads during the last year, according to Sensor Tower. So Biden uh, is behind, uh, you know, the famous TikTok app, which we are going to talk about. But then over the course of last two years, the company has expanded into mobile games publishing. And, uh, you know, as they're looking to diversify the business and uh, challenge the <laughs> Tencent and the T's, well, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> but um they they're acquiring games companies like mobile legends bang bang developer moonton and uh, girls chronicle idol heroin studio c4 connect well i've never heard of uh, that game before but you know uh, the latter studio also developed red alert online which is published by tencent Mm, there that you go. one I saw. That's yeah. a nice yeah, Forex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the classic Forex, uh, Forex game. But, but the most successful title uh, is the Mobile G Legends Bang Bang. And uh, that game picked up 78 million downloads in the last year. Which is nice. It, it, is, it is still currently in a loss of Riot, if I get that right. Like the new one. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, like the seventy-eight million downloads is fifty-six percent of all installs by uh, by their um, games portfolio. Then there's the second game with, uh, yeah, second game is Ragnarok X Next Generation, and then uh, another Moonton game, Sweet Crossing Snake dot io, <laughs> at the third place. But yeah, well, who said that uh, the Mobile Legends Bang Bang is the most lucrative title um, in the last year? generating 317.7 million dollars over the, na the last year which is nice and it's like 32 percent of the the whole spending of of the the biden's mobile games portfolio then we have mm. the girls chronicle and then we have uh what is there mobile legends adventure that mobile is just legends a spin-off yeah. of uh, mobile legends bang bang, bang, IP bang on pretty much something like idol heroes oh nice okay yeah. Well, that's pretty interesting. I mean, we have also like, some other um, uh, data from the, the markets, but, you know, uh, this is going to be interesting for you, Yaku, because the, the largest market for player spending is Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's Japan, but then obviously it's China and then uh, US. Uh, kind of nice. Like, uh, I'm it's said to be like absolute juggernaut. Like that when they have, whenever they IPO, like that's going to be... The biggest IPO in recent memory, like Jesus. There but first, the Ch yeah. Chinese government needs to allow them to IPO. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind. Uh, I would say they're 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 also like facing uh, pressure currently because um, Riot's Wild Rift is pretty much being uh, spread around. Like I mean, you know, the League of Legends version that mm. they did after like uh, the normal Tencent game failed here, RNL Valor didn't get any traction in the West, so this one is moving there. But yeah, the, the MOBA genre is pretty much Asia, so oh, yeah, I guess they, they will sort it out there. 
Oh, but it's interesting. I mean, the the um, the other markets. I mean, the the top markets in um, in regards to installs. It's just like Indonesia, China, okay, and then Philippines. I mean, those are like top three markets in terms of installs, which is interesting. I mean, it's ridiculous. How, re- but... how reliable is the data from China? Yeah, exactly. Nobody <laughs> knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. But this App Store only, so I guess... App Store only, yeah. That, yeah that's I guess the point, that's, man. Yeah, like yeah. you don't, uh, you know, account for yeah, all the other yeah, Chinese yeah, stores, know, which are much bigger, I would say. Yeah, I know, but... I mean, pretty interesting uh, interesting article from Sensor Tower. It's mm. always nice to see how the, the company is trying to diversify the, you know, uh, the revenue streams. So we wanted to do a bit of a TikTok kind of slash by time focused episode today. But well, before we do that, uh, yeah. I would just like to thank you guys from Addictive for showing us really interesting and nice support since the beginning of our podcast. So uh, thank you very much for doing that. If you've built a mobile game for iOS or Android, you've experienced user churn. You can win those users back, but it's getting more and more expensive, even more so to acquire totally new users. Enter cross-promotion with Addictive. By identifying your users likely to churn early, you can showcase another game in your portfolio before they leave forever, transforming a lost user into a new user, increasing your revenues. Learn more now at Addictive.com. And then now we can we can continue with that, with the TikTok. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So... Uh, what sparked this like little TikTok focused episode that we're having today was a graph that was circulating on Twitter uh, like early this week, and it was a really interesting graph. So uh, we'll put it in the show notes a link to it. But uh, it was a graph essentially showing the revenue uh, over time after hitting ten billion in revenue, and it had uh, yeah all the big companies that you normally have on this like kind of graph. So yeah. So you have Meta, Tesla, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and then ByteDance. And what you see is like already after year three, ByteDance is tracking, like after hitting 10 billion uh, on the third year, they're already tracking to hitting 60 billion in revenue. And they're completely, absolutely outgrowing the pace of any other of these companies that grew so quickly. Uh, well, the best hockey stick, yeah. Yeah, yeah all other companies hockey. combined. Yeah. Mm. Tesla has kind of it, but it took a bit too long. It's just they're a juggernaut. Like, they're outgrowing Meta, Tesla, everyone. Like Microsoft grow, grows slow and steady, like, continuously and predictably. But these guys are just, yeah, hockey stick mm. through the roof. So, dug a bit deeper on a report that came out uh, from in May in 2022, so this year. And it said that TikTok is on track to triple its ad revenue, uh, which will basically eclipse the combined ad revenue of Twitter and Snap. <laughs> so TikTok only, like that's only TikTok, is expected to triple from 3.8 billion in ad revenue in 2021 to 11.6 in 2022. That's a 200 percent increase from a and- massive base. And that that's just counting TikTok, which is not counting only the TikTok. other Chinese version. Yeah, yeah? exactly. Not yeah. counting Dalian, mm-hmm. but like only TikTok. And like these numbers, like they don't lie at all. Like you can't reach the scale with ad- without like advertisers getting considerable considerable amount of value from yeah. the ads they're showing on TikTok. And we thought it'd be nice to kind of yeah talk a bit about yeah how to do UA on this platform that's growing so rapidly. And Mata, you do UA, right? You know a bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> what a little a bit here and there. Yeah, what a coincidence. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, okay. We, oh, oh, and uh, I'm uh, running some games on TikTok. And uh, I have to admit in last six months, this, um, this number really grew quite a lot because, well, Facebook is fucked. We can, uh, <laughs> we can, we can admit that. Uh, like the the quality is just terrible, uh, um, and most probably you know people from Facebook moved to Snap and TikTok and maybe other channels. I mean, I'm probably too old for um, any other um, channels like TikTok or Snapchat. Oh well, 
when COVID started, I definitely um, started um, browsing through TikTok, but then eventually uh, deleted the app because there was also um, a nice tweet running around that uh, Chinese government is spying on you through TikTok. <laughs> No one in China cares about you, Magic. So. I know. But th I know that was the time when Trump wanted to like die. Yeah, I, th I think. So. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but yeah. Besides that, there is a couple of fun facts about TikTok. So, um, if you don't have an account manager, then you're also pretty fucked. <laughs> 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 and uh, I, I'm just going to explain why. Because there is, um, you know, usually you can target the whole world on. Facebook, Google, uh, Unity, any other ad network, but not, not on TikTok because if you are don't if you don't have the the rep, you only have a self self serve uh, account, and there are I mean no restriction in terms of placement, but there are definitely restriction on countries uh, that you can target using location. So reach and, is restricted. I'm sorry. Your reach is restricted pretty much. Like your reach, you can advertise for. Yes. And uh, the countries and regions uh, that you can target depends on your company registration uh, country or where you registered your TikTok business account. <laughs> so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna explain. <laughs> so if you re registered your TikTok for business account in Vietnam, you can target different countries than uh, an account that was registered in Spain. <laughs> and I have, a, I have a very fresh example. Uh, there is one game company located in Australia and we, we were, you know, we are in the soft launch and we wanted to target the US because we have uh, US in the soft launch countries and, uh, and we wanted to start it on TikTok and guess what? We were not able to start a campaign in US because if you are sitting in Australia, you have only nine countries you can run the UA in. <laughs> which is absolutely, I mean, uh, ridiculous. So then we had to reach out to someone um, from Asian um, uh, office uh, Representatives. and the, yeah, got the rep. We had to run a campaign in the UK with the $128 budget because it was uh, the minimum requirement. No, I mean, not, nobody cared about the, um, the performance. We just had to run for 10 or 15, 14 days to be able to unlock the U S <laughs> and that only happened thanks to our account manager. It's like, wow. <laughs> Is this some kind of like RPG progression with him? Yeah. Most probably. Yeah. I was like, what? It's like, how is this even possible? Man, this mimics so much what I'm seeing on the admon side with their like audience network tangle. You just yeah. get the feeling that lawyers are running like the international part of TikTok so much to not step in any like legal issues. Yeah. Like, it's, oh. it's really, I mean, that's really ridiculous. So, um, if you are, you know, opening up a new account and you don't have account manager, then you're pretty limited. This happened also to me with one Swedish company. Like, yeah, okay. So I want to run us right away, but we didn't have a, an account manager. And so I can only run like tier one countries like Austria. I mean, it's like 20 countries, but still no us and mm. well, us, why would you, why would you it's still this? like top one country for us. Like if Facebook snap, like it doesn't, does snap have the same instruction? No, 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 no. It's just like TikTok only. I was really surprised when, uh, when I had to deal with this and it's like, whoa, okay. Man, if they grew their revenue 200% with all that, it, like. Exactly. Yes. And you have so many, yeah, so many re restrictions. Wow. <laughs> so imagine if there are no restrictions, then the, the growth could be even better. Uh, isn't there something that we're not missing by placing those restrictions and getting some advantage somewhere else? Like what, what kind of think like there is like, we're not seeing the whole picture, obviously, like there is mm. more of this story. And I suspect if I had to bet some money on why is that they think because they're Chinese, they're going to have even bigger regulatory scrutiny. So they're like, but really like being cautious. How, how is just, you know, it's the same UA channel as Facebook or Google or snap or whatever else. Like, why they, would they like, TikTok? I studied law for three months and I dropped out. I don't have a legal mind. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. But, but you is, mentioned, is, isn't this sorry. sorry from like a, uh, not you a person perspective, isn't this making the, the ads pretty much or the ad space pretty much better for that local person? I mean, 
you know, that if you're not competing with all of these other companies against yourself on that segment, because they're restricted. Yeah, there's less competition, true. But still, I mean, the US is kind of like the only problem you have uh, from like almost anywhere in the world you can target UK, Germany, France, like all these like European tier one countries, even Canada, Australia, and Switzerland and the Nordics as well, but not the US. So I'm not sure, like maybe US is kind of like problematic because of the regulatory issues, but mm. yeah, well, interesting fact, <laughs> very interesting fact that that was really surprised. Uh, how do you get an account manager? Like what kind of spends do you need to hit before you get an account manager? Yeah, you, you need, need to, to meet someone they get along with. Yeah, you need to be very well connected. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's kind of like saying a, that because you're a UA consultant, or is it actually really hard? No, it's re it's actually really hard. Like nobody cares too much uh, about that. I I approached a lot of uh, a lot of guys from the past that I I worked with before, and like yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. and then after some <laughs> some deep discussions, then uh, we we were able to open up a lot of uh, a lot of new countries. So it's it's very interesting, very interesting case. Mm. Then uh, you know maybe someone from TikTok will reach out to us and say uh, I'm pretty much wrong, but you know, please. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We have that uh, the fun stuff. That it sounds can... sounds to me like some kind of an invite only thing. It was like that before. Um, so you really had to go through a lot of hoops to get uh, the account on the, on TikTok and the business manager, uh, especially. Um, so, you know, no, not a lot of companies could run TikTok campaigns before. And that's why there, there are like these companies like HTT pool that can help you open up the accounts and, um, and some, some other companies as well. You know, there were like some agencies, they claim that they are the only ones making days that they can run TikTok campaigns. Mm. They clean that up, man. It's going to be a rocket ship. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, it's already a, a rocket ship. So, Without uh, this, yeah. Yeah. It's, and you know, the thing is, um, I'm going to talk about that later on uh, with all these like best practices, but, um, it's, it's looking and working pretty well. Uh, and to be honest, way better than Facebook these days. So. I can, I can take that. I can take all these like hoops and restrictions. Do you think it's care. like, it must surely be different if you're like spending, you know, like 10, 20, 30 K a day, like on TikTok, surely it must be different. Of course it's different. I mean, it's, it's still, it's still uh, a UA channel without the value optimization, for example. So you are, you are not able to run the, the value optimized campaigns for the, the whales that you can run on Google or, uh, or Facebook. It is in the beta program for some accounts. Uh, I, I had uh, some, um, the well connected ones, <laughs> some luck for, for testing it, uh, in the past, but it's still like, uh, again, very early. Doesn't really work yet. Yeah. They're testing it. So, you know, uh, yeah. it can go in a very, uh, different directions. Same thing with, uh, with playables, for example. So they are testing it, but they're testing it on Pangle only. And Pangle is right the, the audience network for TikTok, right? Yeah. Any any comments on the on the ad monetization side for, for yeah. Pangle? I know you mentioned it like multiple times. Uh, yeah, like actually. it's been it's been the next big thing to get excited over in the admon world for the last exactly like PR for the last two years. Because <laughs> thank you. Like yeah, I know you so, mentioned it like a million times and nothing happened yet. Yeah. So, so the reason nothing has happened yet is exactly the same. So when you're saying that, like I hear exactly the same thing on the admon side. So yeah. the main issue is Hangul has not launched in any European country yet or um, like or in or in America. So yeah. like for that reason, on an admon perspective, like it's kind of like not worthy integrating for at least the apps that I work with. But like mm. the thing is, like I've worked with Pangol once on a considerable amount of scale in Japan, which was one of the first years mm. they launched. And it was super impressive. I was already had the SDK when they launched. So after three weeks, like the eCPMs were higher uh, on iOS than Facebook. This mm -hmm. was before the IDFA stuff. Okay. And then, nice. yeah, like the fill after three weeks just overtook Facebook and like, it was getting better performance than Facebook uh, in Japan on rewarded and everything was looking really good. Rewarded and interstitials. So it's looking super strong. 
And right now, like currently, like pangolins are like only live in some countries, uh, like the only ones that are kind of interesting, like where you can get these in ECPMs is Japan, South Korea, like Singapore. It's mm. just like without America, it's just really tough sell to get it started. And yeah. they said like two years ago, yeah, Q1 and then Q1 came, oh, I was Q3 and then <laughs> Q4. And now I'm just like, hey, how about this year? Like, yeah, Q2, Q2 <laughs> finished and now they're like, maybe Q4. Yeah. And it's just like what I'm hearing is just like legal is pushing back so much and they want to have all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed when they go live in mm. the EU and America okay. because of basically the fallout, like a la Trump and stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I've heard is probably they would launch Europe before America and that will be kind of the starting gun to see how that goes. But to be honest, mm. like their bidder, like on app loving has been like, was really good. I, I don't run it currently, so I can't speak of it, but I don't imagine that it's not going to be like with the numbers that we said earlier, like how they're growing. Like, I don't imagine it being like, any worse. So, yeah. yeah. Well, can't wait. Can't wait. It's going to be a great. Um, I just get the feeling impressive. like they, they sort out Pangle, they sort out that UA stuff. And like, I'm sure they want to sort that out to have the numbers looking really polished before they go public. Like, yeah, well, yeah. I can imagine. <clears throat> but maybe there is also like in EU, uh, EU or something on the GDPR side as well. I mean, what else could be a problem? Yeah. Well, I will see. Man, the, the, the legal team must be running the company right now. Like, at least in international <laughs> business, like 100%. Like, from yeah. what you hear, like, it sounds like legal issues. This is not tech issues. This is legal issues. Isn't there also like this kind of a Chinese government aspect into it? Because I, you know, lately, for instance, I heard that there's like a rumor mill on the DDIPO happening and then not happening and happening again. Same goes for the end IPO. So maybe there's also, you know, behind the scenes problems that we don't see there. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, Didi is the Chinese version of Uber, the, one of the biggest yes. unicorns there. I okay. don't know, but it's quite obvious yeah. who, who uh, control, runs the ship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we can, uh, yeah, we can move to the actual UA stuff for TikTok, which is um, kind of similar, but also very different from Facebook. Even though if you open up a TikTok ads manager is the same thing as Facebook, but not in blue color, but in black color. <laughs> it's I, heard, I heard a really funny story because I was at GDC and I ran into some guy in a bar and he was really nice. And I was just like, what do you do? So like, oh, I designed like the, the, the front end of like the ad manager at TikTok. I was like, oh, cool. It's like, what did you do before that? I designed the one from like Facebook. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I also did Snapchats. So I was like, yeah, what? yeah that's what I want to yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, exactly what? what I wanted to say. Like, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you missed you missed uh, the the Snapchat um, career being in the between because there's like, o always uh, these um, stories when Snapchat started to grow. So they poached a lot of people from from Facebook. So they joined, they built the same thing they built for Facebook. And then when TikTok started to grow, like they poached a lot of Snapchat people because it, there you go. It was like exactly the same. Although I think TikTok is working way better in terms of the UA than Snapchat. So sorry guys, don't kill me, uh, the guys from Snapchat, but that's how it is. I mean, that's that's how the, the channel is performing. Unfortunately or fortunately, well, fortunately for me, <laughs> but still, so uh, how do you guys, well, do you have TikTok on your phones? No. I removed it after a week because I okay. felt a bit like a creep because I was just looking at younger people. <laughs> like, yeah, it was, I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it very different. It will serve you whatever you're looking for, you know, like it's, it's the algorithms working really great. Yeah, it's a different platform. So it's, it was a lot of uh, videos of dancing uh, people. And uh, I was actually, I mean, I was actually having fun watching those people during the COVID, but then kind of lost interest of, of doing the same thing all over again. But again, like you said, the algo works pretty efficiently. And if you are interested in something that, that, that it, it will serve you the same, um, same content or very similar content. And uh, there's a lot of trends and hype happening on the, on the platform on 
almost on a daily basis. So um, in terms of the best practice on on, uh, on the UA side, I think like discovering trending hashtags on a daily basis and using them in ads, that's pretty, pretty amazing, which multiplies the reach because uh, then if you can use it in the, in the creative, you will get pretty interesting organic reach as well. I mean, it's the platform is usually about around, uh, like centered around these like, um, dancing moves, but you can find that very different hashtags and, um, and usually like using one to five hashtags gets you closer to, the, to your target audience. So doing this uh, research on a weekly basis, is kind of like nice, um, activity or exercise. So, and I need to debunk one myth that everybody's talking about, which is the, the creatives and using the real people in the creatives and situation. So you, your, um, content looks native. Yes, you can do that. But like a lot of people still say, oh, well, I can't, we can't run TikTok because we don't have creatives with real people. And it's like, Come on. <laughs> it's, it can help you with the performance. It can uh, help you improve the numbers, but you can start the campaigns with whatever creatives works for you on the other channels. Being there, done that. You just, you know, just test it out. Don't believe every, everything that everybody else says. Like, yeah, well, who cares about that guy or whoever that says like, Hey, you need real, real people in the creative. So, uh, are, are we talking about those creatives with that really, really specific stock actors with specific stock acting? Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a new trend on the, on the other channels for the Forex games and uh, I'm not sure for, for other channels as well, but yeah, it's, it's really weird, but yeah, it's, I mean, you can use that, um, on TikTok, but again, you can use, use whatever you you have and uh, and uh, and have pretty good results. That's uh, that's where like I feed feed chips to ants. <laughs> feed chips, yeah, exactly. Feed chips to ants. There you go. So, so I've never run a UA campaign on TikTok. Uh, like, so is it pretty much? <laughs> yeah, it has to be videos, right? Or is it like it can the be? It can be st static image as well, but uh, it's uh, it's a vertical format mostly, but. I also found found out that even if it doesn't make any sense on the on the vertical format uh, platform, you can run landscape and square videos, and it can work pretty well. Because yeah, well, you know, everybody is using the vertical format. Usually, it should be like in a high quality, um, and um, and if you use the square format of landscape, like that's something that catches people attention because <laughs> it's, it's different. What's a, what's a average CPI now for like, let's say like a casual game in the States, if you're using uh, TikTok? Well, right now I would say, uh, for running a purchase campaign, I can actually give you a comparison on the, on the numbers. So for TikTok purchase campaign, like significant scale on a daily basis, it's like $1.5, which is absolutely ridiculously low. If I compare that with, uh, with Facebook. I'm seeing the same scale, like six or seven dollars on the purchase campaign. There you go. Mm. But you know, you won't be able to see the same numbers for every game because I've seen Facebook working better for certain games um, and had lower CPIs than TikTok. But again, it was mostly about like the creatives and the, the campaign structure. But I mean, this is working super well and uh, yeah. But that's scale why I'm is unlimited or like, yeah, it's scale isn't unlimited, but it's, um, it's growing and, uh, it's pretty decent. I would but it's say not, it's not value optimized as you say. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not value optimized yet. So mm. even, even, with, but the thing is like, even with purchase optimized campaigns, which is the app event optimization, you can see pretty interesting ROAS. So, and I wouldn't run the campaigns if I wouldn't hit the positive ROAS on day I don't know, like 30 or 60. So, so that's, that's pretty interesting into my head. Do you pay to like sponsor challenges as well? Well, the thing is so with TikTok, the biggest challenge is the, the creative refresh because you need to, you know, since the, the platform is about videos, everybody just uh, consumed the, the videos on a daily basis and you need to rotate the, um, the creatives on a weekly basis, which I would 
do anyway on the different channels. But in uh, in this case, uh, it's not enough to add just one creative. You need to add more creatives than one. Usually I do like three to five. Com- it doesn't need to be a completely new creative concept. Minimal changes are, are, are kind of needed. So, you know, different background music, different button, different lengths and stuff like that, like minimum changes, but needs to be a new creative. So that can help you drive the the impressive numbers afterwards. You know, there are also like other other best practices in terms of the 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 creatives, which is like adding like background music to uh, to your ads to make them more enjoyable and well native. The fun fun part of the of the TikTok is uh, the video uh, tool or video creator video creator tool, which helps you add also like TikTok uh, music from their library. Man, they have like millions of, of sounds and audio and music in their library that you can use freely. That's, that's, that's pretty impressive. It's really good. And also, um, there is a, a tool that can help you like adjust creatives and also like make these like small changes, uh, that I've uh, talked about. And it's just automated as well. So it, you know, you have one video, it can help you build like six videos out of it. Just, you know, adding some, um, some buttons there, some emojis, uh, different visual effects and, uh, and stickers even like, it's, it's really, really interesting. Is the whole, like, is it more user-friendly than like Facebook? Snapchat, like, and it's, it's the same thing. It's the same, it's the same exactly thing. Exactly the yeah. same. Yeah. Exactly the same. It's like really like literally the same thing. You have the same, uh, layout of, of the buttons. UI is almost the same and, uh, it's just a different color. So you have blue for, for Facebook, uh, yellow for snap and black for TikTok, And that's it. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, I mean, really easy to, to start a campaign. Um, also one, one important part, uh, easy if you know, so that's what you said. <laughs> Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. But then in terms of the creatives, uh, one important part, um, usually using longer format, longer form, uh, creatives on the different channels here, uh, it's more around like nine to 15 seconds, like short videos, really like catchy with music. That's something that performs really well. And also, uh, one imp- not important, but interesting, um, fact that, uh, usually starting the campaign with very broad audience, also with, um, the lowest cost, um, optimization. So I'm letting the, the TikTok algorithm do the magic trick. And then afterwards, um, using their insights to see which segments are performing the best. And they have like loads of, uh, interesting data on the audience side, uh, all the, um, interest and all the, the, the demo, um, information, and then using that to build an, a different or like the next campaigns and then local b- building lookalikes, the same thing that, that happens on, on Facebook basically. And then, uh, with the lowest cost bidding, I'm just, uh, checking the average cost per install or cost per action, whatever you're using for the optimization. And then like limiting the, the costs based on that, the data. So, I mean, pretty straightforward. Again, if you if you know someone, like doing like doing this little research, like convinced me of one thing. As soon as ByteDance goes public, I'm buying shares. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, juggernaut. Uh, should yeah. we uh, call it a day? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, there you have it, can... folks. UA tips from maybe Martin maybe Quinn, the Powerpuff oh. Girls on his chest. Always what? listen to a man that has the Powerpuff Girls of tattooed course. on his yeah. chest. Yeah, Jakub wants to say something. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just like you know, again, non UA person, and like want to have yeah. some kind of a prediction here. So do you do you say that as the time goes, this kind of just focuses more on what's happening now, meaning that Facebook gets worse, all the other channels get worse, and TikTok gets better in a way. It could be. I mean, the, the audience grows uh, in terms of uh, you know, it's not only like young people anymore on the on the platform, which was the case before COVID hit mm-hmm. nobody was using, um, TikTok because there was like no ROI basically. But now, I mean, the, the audience is definitely grown. And, um, do you see that, that there's any, any possibility of a turnaround for Facebook to catch up with them? They would need to change, uh, a lot of, um, their algo and how the, 
actually how the, the users and, and people consume the content on, on Facebook because, you know. But, but that's the main difference between the platforms, whereas it is. TikTok pretty much created the whole thing based on the immediate algorithm and Facebook, you need to create your whole kind of targeting by, you know, liking this, liking that, liking that. Sure. But the thing is, like, if you, uh, if you think about, like, how you use, use TikTok, you open, I mean, 10 years ago, you, you opened up Facebook, you just wanted to chat with your friends, read news and, uh, and watch some, some videos and content. Now, what do you do on Facebook? I not, I, the only thing I, I use is, is messenger app. Yeah. I don't even open the Facebook because there is nothing. There's yeah, nothing, there's like re nothing every relevant second, anymore. Every second feed item is an ad pretty much. Exactly. It's an ad or a hoax or some like really yeah. dummy, polarizing dummy content. content. Polarizing <laughs> content. Yeah. Because that's, that's what uh, everybody wants apparently. So, you know, like there's the thing, like you don't use Facebook that much anymore. So logically there are, you know, different UA channels that, uh, drive these, uh, impressive numbers. So, mm. yeah, I, I, I'm not able to predict anything because, you know, I hate predictions. But do, do you want to say you're kind of skeptic? <laughs> I'm not a skeptic. I just don't, I just don't do predictions, <laughs> okay, but no, okay. I, I don't think, I don't think Facebook can, uh, can turn this around, uh, this year, maybe, maybe next year or the year after it. It's not an easy job. It's not. Are you easy telling job me Facebook is going to have less money to spend on their VR headsets? Dude, that's like telling me <laughs> there's no <laughs> Well, let's see what happens. You know, like no they worry. create. We are, will survive. It will. It has for sixty years. It will survive next sixty years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they will create their their metaverse, and then they will, uh, you know, serve ads uh, in the metaverse. And that's, uh, the turnaround, that's turning, the turnaround, the turning point. Yeah. yeah the turning point in the in Facebook universe. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, thank you for listening. Hit the subscribe button on all the YouTubes, Spotify's and Apple's and wherever, uh, you are watching TikTok. or <laughs> on TikToks as well, <laughs> listening to us. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks guys. Until next time. Bye. Bye. See ya.